Oh. Ah. Yo, what's good with the family? We here. Y'all probably thought I wasn't going to come, huh? Y'all was like, y'all was like, there's no way he's going to come. It's, it's, it's past 10 o'clock where he's at. It's past 10 o'clock. I don't believe it. Whoever, by the way, is on this uh, MMA card, the uh, co-main event. I'm sorry, the, the, the pre to the co-main event. And the green, she's thick. Respect to her. But, hey, salute to the people. If y'all going to hop in, you're going to watch this with me this late, late Saturday night. Is At least if you on the same side of the coast that I'm on when you heard me. Uh, we here, you know what I'm saying? So, salute to the people, man. You see me, I'm already amped because, you know, it's late night. So, I'm already on. You know, I'm on 100. Y'all see, I got the new uh, whatever it is. But, salute. If y'all hop up in here, y'all don't subscribe. And you're not part of the family. I don't understand why that's disrespectful. Subscribe, man. And go ahead, hit the like button. Show some love. Like button means anything. But we're going to watch this, man. We got Hooker uh, versus uh, Virgil Ortiz Jr. coming up, man. They just got done interviewing Terrence Crawford. Mark, if y'all don't know Maurice Hooker, he switched caps. After his loss to Ramirez, he went and he hooked up with uh, Terrence Crawford and his team. You know, he got that last t uh, uh, KO win. Also, remember, he moved up in weight. So he got that KO. Excuse me. Uh, he got that KO win. And then also... Um, I remember, he moved up the weight to 147 because he was at 140. My whole day, remember, he said, I'm tired of cutting that way. I'm tired of cheating the game. Go go to Terrence Crawford's camp. Went over to Terrence Crawford's camp. Got his shit right. Got a KO win. It was a beautiful win. And now he is here. Um, you know, once again, that's one thing you got to give Hooker at the very least. No matter what you can say, dude's not afraid to take big fights because him fighting Ramirez was a big risk. You see how it paid off. And him fighting Virgil Ortiz Jr., big risk. Let's see how it pays off. It's going to be a tough fight for him. Let's see if those tools were taught to him in a different way when it comes to Crawford's camp to where he was previously but as always before we get into that obviously we're gonna watch holland versus brunson too before we get into that y'all know how i do baby i gotta make sure where's my phone oh it's in my pocket i gotta make sure the audio is cool you know what i'm saying I, i'm pretty sure it is um but you know what i'm saying it's just part of the game oh no that's not my phone damn i don't remember where i put my phone i think i i think i left my phone uh in the uh in the other room so i'm gonna get that later i'm not even gonna do that right now what i'm gonna do though Let's see what this box inside the game is at right now. I'm over on the MMA side. So we got the we got the walkouts coming on the box inside the game. We got uh hooker coming out. Let me do this because I, I do got two phones. I'm on, on my Kevin Gate. Um, I'm gonna just see what it sounds like on this one, and I'll just look for my other one later. But salute to the people, man. If y'all up in here, man, y'all ain't throw the like, hit the like button. Hopefully, it's snipers is popping up in here, man. Excuse me, because he was asking me if he was gonna be he was gonna be live. I went live for the better, you know what I'm saying? Let me see the video. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna be right back, family. I'm gonna be right back. So y'all know Maurice Hooker is now doing his walkout for Virgil Ortiz, and we still got two fight. Uh, we still got the fight we're watching right now in the UFC side of the game, the Kona main, main event for you, Holland and Brunson. I'm gonna be right back. My bad about this, family. Uh, but just so you know, hit that like button, rock with me, salute. I'm be right back. Oh, there we go. There we go. I found it. I found it, fam. I gotta go nowhere. That's what happens. Sometimes you misplace things. We go, fam. All right. Maurice Hooker, you making his way out right now. Got to keep that on mute because you already know how that go. I don't really got to watch none right now, so. Hold up, y'all. I'm gonna be right back. Hey, hit that like button. If y'all hit the like button, I'm gonna play some music for some reason. My speakers ain't coming in, y'all. Oh, 
Oh, that's a bad one. It's million dollar poop season, and DraftKings is giving you a shot to turn big buckets into big bucks. That's right, new customers play free for millions with their first deposit. Just craft your winning lineup of players and turn that into a grab your team all season long. So Virgil Ortiz, he's, he's doing his walkout now. How y'all been though, man? How y'all how y'all weekend been going? You know, I in my opinion, I feel like my week is, my week has been cool, by the way. But in my opinion, and so y'all know anybody who's hopping up in here is commentary only. We sticking straight to the commentary side of the game. We're not showing no video. I feel like everybody should know that by now. 2021 is YouTube, but you know, you gotta put that disclaimer out there. It's also in the title. Commentary only, okay? That's all we doing, man. We rocking it's fluence lounge, man. It's episode 12. We chill it, we rock it, we do what we do. You heard me? Virgil Ortiz, he's coming out. Like I said, man, um, earlier when I was talking about this is going to be a tough fight for Maurice Hooker, you know, simply on the basis of, um, you know, you got another aggressive, shorter opponent with power in both hands coming at you, and that's always that's that's always trouble for any tall fighter. That's always trouble, man. Tall, tall, tall fighters when it comes to the boxing side of the game. When it comes to combat sports, really, period, or if you want to kind of just center it down to M high-level MMA, High level boxing. Um, when you're fighting against a shorter opponent um, who has power in you know both hands and you know was able to you know really cut off the distance quick and is able to use certain movements or is able to use certain combinations to be able to get on the inside. Um, if you are not you know a magnifico when it comes to your defensive capabilities as the taller fighter, man, it's very easy to get caught because you have so many openings. You know your body's going to be open. You know, all parts of your body is going to be open. The liver is going to be open. The stomach is going to be open. The sternum is going to be open. Your shoulder is always going to be there. And then, you know, you're always going to be vulnerable when it comes to that top left corner. And that's what you saw with Maurice Hooker versus Jose Ramirez. Talking about that, Virgil Ortiz went ahead and made his walk in. So we're here, man. I'm going to go ahead and focus on this. Fight. All right, we got the Virgil Ortiz Jr. Maurice Hooker on full display, baby. That's what we paying attention to. That's what we're going to be watching. When the time starts, I'm going to spread the start. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, put on that boxing cap and go full glasses in that joint. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to be 100% in there. I want to walk away real quick, maybe possibly, but I just don't want to do it too quick. Any type of way, man. Don't give me the pause side of the game, though. I'm not playing with that right now. Come on now. Let me do this. I know what I got to do. There we go. Yeah. Let's do this. Oh, yeah, baby. This is, this is, I love, I love hitting gym boxing fights like this, man. It's a beauty. It's, it's a beautiful thing, man. Ortiz versus Hooker, you know what I'm saying? Maybe underrated when it comes to the mainstreamers, but. Uh, excuse me, when it comes to the, um, 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 you know, the, the, the not mainstream side of the game, the hardcore boxing fan, man, this is an amazing fight. Right here. Let's get it, baby. I'm going to turn down that. Let's get it, baby. Let's go, baby. Come on. They're announcing young Maurice. Come on. It's game time. No playing, no more. You know what I'm saying? We here. We here to prove it. Come on. This is your chance right here. You can do right back in the spotlight, man. 147. You right in the thick of things, man. He's gonna have to be. He's gonna have to box. He's gonna have to do what Terrence Crawford said, baby. He's gonna have to box it up, man. 
He's going to have to box, man. For Hooker to stay alive and stay away from the power in Ortiz Jr., man, he's going to have to box. He boxed for a short time against Ramirez, but he got caught against them ropes. He started to exchange, and then you saw what happened from there. You can't let that happen against Ortiz Jr. Ortiz Jr., in my opinion, is more dangerous than Ramirez. But also, you know, Hooker didn't have to cut as much weight. He says it's a much more natural weight for him, but he got a lot bigger guys, killers, you know what I'm saying? So let's see how he's going to be able to adapt to that. Do it, baby. We all in, baby. We got the glasses on. I'm all in. I'm, I'm checking it. We here. Right in 10 minutes in, baby. Let's go. Got the fans in there, man. I think they got it at like uh, what fifty percent capacity, you know, forty five percent, whatever it may be. But the fans in there, you can feel it's lit, baby. Here we go. He's going to have to box. He's going to have to use the, that reach. He's going to have to use the defense, baby. He's going to have to rob it east of this joint. Don't do that. Don't. I didn't like that right off the bat from Hooker, but then, then he switched stances. Okay. I didn't like how we parry. Oh, already he's getting, he's getting caught by that. Uh, the counter left hook. You can't. You got to use your range. Be careful. Stay on the outside. Understand your range. Don't get too close. Hooker's already showing problems, man. Hooker's already showing problems. This might be over quick. This might be over quick. Hooker got to give uh, respect for Ortiz Jr., man. Oh, oh, big left hook from Ortiz, man. Your jab had to be stronger than that. Oh, that was a big body shot from um, Ortiz Jr. You could tell that hurt Hooker, man. Oh, there's not much. Oh, come on. You got to get out of there, man. See, that's what that's the problem with Hooker. He'll throw and he'll he'll look. I know it's still the first round, but he's gonna he, he looks. He 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 admires his work, man. Throw that goddamn punch, bring it right back to the face, and get out of there. Utilize, look, he's, he's already starting to brawl. He's already starting to brawl. Don't do that. I don't like how he's pairing either. He's pairing with his right hand. He's coming all the way down like this. You're leaving too many open. You should just be keeping it there. Bring the hand back, brother. Good body, good, good dab of the body from uh, Ortiz Jr. It's a good work right here from Ortiz. Oh, big right hand from Ortiz. Ortiz looks more powerful, man. He looks faster. He looks stronger. He looks comfortable. I'm, I'm just calling it how it is, man. It is what it is, man. Hooker struggling right now. Hooker doesn't look good. He does not look good. And in the sense of that doesn't mean I'm not saying he didn't train. I didn't say I'm not saying he's not ready, but it's just in the sense like what I was talking about earlier. You're, you're, you're literally going against a younger and, and, and a bigger and a more explosive Jose Ramirez. Now he switched over to Tamara's conference camp to think he would be able to focus, excuse me, be able to fix some of the problems that he had when it came to the Ramirez fight. And, you know, he showed forth in his last fight where he had a TKL win. But, you know what I'm saying, now you're going against high level competition. So. Let's see how you'll be able to fold. Right now, he's getting hit with a lot of shots. You don't want to see him get hit with when it comes to the first round. And, and, he's, in, and he's exchanging a couple times in the pocket that you don't want to see see him do early in the round. You don't want Ortiz to be comfortable thinking that he can get on all the pocket at any time he can because now he's dictating the fight. Make it a, you, as, as, as Hooker, you got to make it a boring fight. You know what I'm saying? That's why I was so impressed with Easter Jr. at his last fight, man. He made it a boring fight and he didn't have to. He could have gotten in the pocket with the guy and possibly exchange but you know his his father you know was great in the corner he just kept telling him because he kept telling him he's i want to fight i want to brawl he's like no nah, man stick to it stick to the boxing i just wish hooker's jab was just a little bit more oomph to it you know what i'm saying he's touching them too much There's, he's touching them too much at least he's as at least every time he's throwing the jab out he's just really using it to set up a um like he's already getting into a brawl this isn't good come on now you gotta get up out of there man fight your fight hooker you already went against your game plan but uh when hooker is throwing his jab out i i just i i don't like the fact that he's using it more as a measuring stick in the sense of he's like waiting to use it as like the to, to throw the right hand out and maybe a right hook or it looks like he's liking the right uppercut a lot um i would prefer him especially in the beginning of the rounds to actually be use that you know jab as your right hand use it as your first you know your for, first tool to keep him off of you because with a, with a young aggressive bulldog like ortiz jr you have to make him respect your jab before you can actually touch him with anything else if he doesn't respect your jab everything else is going to follow just like your jab it's going to miss or it's not going to land cleanly 
So I, I wish uh, why didn't, you know, Hooker using that as kind of like a, you know, I'm waiting for him to get right in range so I can throw this, you know, as a setup, you know, throw that jab out, throw it, throw it like you're actually trying to knock the dude out and use that as your main offensive tool, maybe for the first two, three rounds to get Ortiz, you know, to respect you if it's possible. That's, 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 that would be my advice to him. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, you, you don't want to be, you, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to be in the backyard with a bulldog, you know what I'm saying? When you a great day, you know what I'm saying? I don't even know if that made sense, but I said it. So, salute to the people. Hit that like button, y'all. But he's even there. He's just lightly, he's just, he's just lightly throwing that jab out. He's not really throwing it, you know, for it to make any type of impact. You know what I'm saying? I had that, I, you know, when I was, you know, training, I had that problem myself. It's like, use that jab as a distance. Like, that's why Easter, I loved watching what Easter was doing, man. He was, he was, he, he really knows how to use that jab. I think Easter has a bright future after watching that. I think he can easily move up to 147. You know what I'm saying? If he can put some weight on, get in the weight room a little bit. But you see right away, you know what I'm saying? Rather than Hooker um, using his jab for him to establish a boundary between him and Ortiz, he's just touching him. And Ortiz is just like, all right, if all you're going to throw is that little light jab, I'm going to hit you with an uppercut, a left uppercut to the body. I'm hit you with a left, uh, a, a left hook, you know, to the head. I'm like that jab is not that he's he hasn't thrown. I don't think he's really thrown it one jab with any type of meaning. It's upsetting. Throw him off, you man. He threw a double jab, nothing behind it. That's not a knockdown. I, I'll say this though, man. Hooker is definitely looking like the weaker fighter between the two but it was the same thing with ramirez though it was the same thing you know what i'm saying he was getting his off but it didn't look like anything he was landing landed with any type of substance behind it there's no you know hooker reminds me of neil magny in, in ufc uh ufc like dude's just all conditioning but when he goes up against someone you know who may not be as fundamentally sound as some may see or you know work certain aspects of the fighting game that people love to watch it's just you know, he just, you know, he ends up getting hit with that one big shot or gets overpowered or is a bigger guy and he can't do nothing about it because it's just, that's just him. That's his frame. That's how he thought. That's what it is. Yeah. What I will say, though, to the difference of this fight, um, yeah, he did grab the back of your head, brother. But the, diff the difference between this fight and um ramirez i will give him is he's a lot more he's a lot more calm and subtle when he's getting hit with big shots when he got hit with big shots against ramirez it seemed like he was shocked he was, he was it was almost like he was like whoa he hit me or i inspect this like this that him you know i don't like him getting hit with these shots because over the course of the fight is going it's going to wear these are big shots he's getting hit with like that was a straight right hand and it was close and he stood and he took it Looked like he might have been out a little bit um but you know what I what I, what I do what I will give him the difference in this fight for from Maurice Hooker is the way he's taking these big shots. You can you can tell he's not being shook by it. He's not being rattled by it. He's maybe not you know allowing his instincts to take over in a sense where you know he ends up making some type of error based off of him getting hit by a shot that he didn't expect to get hit by. Um, you know he's he's continuing to box. He's continuing. You can tell they told him to box. The way you got the only way you're gonna be able to win is if you box. And and, and if you go away from that, if you get in the, in, in the inside, if you get into a dog match, get into a brawl, you're gonna lose. We've seen this happen before, Jose. So I like that he's that that's that's his game plan, and he's sticking to it. Is you know I just don't know. I won't say I don't know. I just don't. It's not necessarily. It's not working, in the sense of, you know. He's got to throw something, man. He's got to earn the respect of Ortiz. You know, he's he's getting some shots off, but it's, it doesn't seem like anything's landing. It's not even that it's landing clean. It's just, it just doesn't really think like it's, it seems like he's really landing anything with some moves behind it, man. It seems like he's he's just throwing it and he's trying to get that 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 glove back to the face quick so he doesn't get countered with anything, which is can be problem problematic with boxers because you know there ain't nothing behind it. You know, that's why I keep, you know, I hate sound like a, uh, you know, a record machine or a broken record, man. But uh, Easter Juniors, y'all watched him in the last fight, you know, on Adrian Bonus card, man. The way he utilized his jab was just beautiful, man. I was very impressed with him. I was, I was impressed. That was the best I've ever seen him look, in my opinion. So, um, 
So y'all know I'm watching the Maurice Hooker, Vir uh, Virgil Ortiz Jr. Uh, fight right now. It's the third round. Ortiz Jr., man, he's, he's won both rounds. He's looked amazing. Maurice Hooker, um, you know what I'm saying? He's he's going to have to put a little bit more behind his shots, man. He's going to have to gain the respect of uh, Ortiz Jr. if he's going to want to be able to actually have anything, you know, a leg in the fight. Um, I got the UFC card, on the other hand, going on the other one. You know what I'm saying? It's still the co-main event ain't started yet, so it's not even the main event. So I don't even think the main event will happen until after this fight is over, to be honest with you. So we rock and we roll and we chill if y'all up in here, man, y'all hit that like button. Hit the like button. Ortiz Jr. is landing big shots on Hooker. Hooker did exactly what you shouldn't do. And he, he for a moment, he thought he could trade in the pocket. You're a taller fighter. He threw the body shot. Ortiz came over the top. So what's going to happen? Oh, that's a big shot. He took two big shots from Ortiz Jr., man. Hooker's taking big shots. He's still boxing, but he's just unfortunate, man. There's nothing behind Hooker's jab, man. There's just nothing behind it. For a guy like Ortiz, that type of da that jab is not going to do nothing, man. Hooker's going to be in survival mode, you know, most of this fight. His best bet is Ortiz tires out trying to finish him. Oh, beautiful left hook right there from Hooker. I like that. Doubled it up, a couple to the body, then came over the top. You know what I'm saying? I like it. Hooker's definitely taking the shots better in this fight than he was taking against Ramirez, like I said before. Part of it might have been the weight cut, you know what I'm saying? Part of it might be the fact that you know what I'm saying? He's learned a little bit differently. You know what I'm saying? He's learning. You know what I'm saying? Not to overreact from big shots or feel like he has to get him back just as big after he got hit with something. He's like, let me take my time. I'm, 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 maybe I'm talking myself into it. I'm, I'm, I'm slowly becoming a bigger fan of Hooker right now in this fight. He does. He definitely looks a lot better than he did against Ramirez. Now, no, don't get me wrong. Ortiz Jr. is clearly winning this fight. This is going to be the third round he's going to win. Third round of the road. And there's been times I'm, you know. But remember, he got finished, I think, the fourth round against Ramirez. So let's see. Hit that like button. I don't want to show me no now, man. Hit the like button. Goddamn. But we're here though. Appreciate y'all. Okay, Hooker. There you go. Oh, beautiful left hook from Hooker. Okay. And he threw the tongue out. Oh, another one. Okay. Hey. Hey, we got a fight. This came out of nowhere, man. Okay. We got a fight, man. So this time, Hooker, he did two things at the end of that round. Ortiz, you know, got a little bit too aggressive, but rather than coming in with a combination... Oh, no, he did come in. He came with a double jab, but it was predictable because he was using that a lot. So he came with a double jab with the right hand, and Hooker just, he, he caught him with the left hook. I like it. I like it. Let's go, Hooker. Remember, fourth round, baby. Come on, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of Hooker, man. Oh, that's why I criticize him so much, and I'm hoping the best. But Ortiz is a beast, man. I, I really think this is a really high heel, you know, decline for, 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 for Hooker, man. But I salute to him because he's doing it. So here comes Ortiz, man. He's coming. So they got all three rounds by the unofficial scorecards for Ortiz Jr. I got it the same way. Big jab from Ortiz Jr. Snap that head back from, from Hooker. Look at the difference in the power of the jabs. Um, I guess you can actually just say that, you know, Ortiz, you know, he's not throwing too many, but when he throws it, it's a power jab and it's snapping Hooker back. While Hooker's using more his as a, as a, as a distance, you know, a, a, rain, a, a measurement, a, a ruler, just to kind of, you know, see if he can, you know, stay on the outside and, you know, stay out of the range of the big power punches from Ortiz or be able to, you know, get some counter shots off. I would like Hooker to, to, to utilize that left hook a little bit more like he was using at the end of that round. It's interesting to use it then. He's not even thinking about it now. Like, you got to throw when he's throwing. So I'm like, rather than throw the one-two when he's throwing the one-two, go back to what you did before and throw that left hook. After he throws that jab, Ortiz Jr., you know what I'm saying? You know, when he's loading up that right hand, he loads it up, throw the left hook. There he is. He did it right there. Ortiz, though, he kept that right hook up. Uh, he, excuse me, that right hand up, though, that time. He was ready for it. But if he's ready for it, that means he respected that. So that's, that's a good sign for Hooker. hooker. hooker gotta, yeah, you got to throw something, but you can't throw that right hand like that blindly. You got to throw a combination. Oh, there it was. Beautiful. 
Beautiful work from Hooker. Hey, I like it, man. That was nice. Okay. We got us a fight, man. Just don't be too just just just, just don't get sloppy, Hooker. We have less room for mis uh, mistakes and error than, than Ortiz Jr. does. Oh, that was okay. Okay, Hooker. All right. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, that was beautiful. Okay. Come on. Hey, this is a, this is this is a great fight, man. I hope if y'all ain't watching this, man, y'all miss it now. Good work, good work, man. What a man! Went for that left hook. Hooker is getting comfy, man. This is this is beautiful. He's throwing a little bit more behind his butt. All right. Too much criticism too early. I see for him. I just did. Oh, beautiful, beautiful to the body. Oh man, he has he has Ortiz Jr. on his back foot, man. Hey, that's Hooker's round, man. He won that round. He got around up under his belt. That's three one. Oh, we got him stuff a little. Mm, okay. I see you. Er, er, I see you, man. Living life, man. You got to salute, young bro. Living his best life, man. This right here, man. This is a good fight. This is this is a good fight, man. Oh, first three, you know, first three rounds, Hooker. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful right hand. No, he didn't roll with that. He rolled with it after he got hit. You see him? He's he's moving his jaw. Look at the oh man, Hooker got him in trouble. Are we saying that Jose Ramirez is better than Virgil Ortiz? I know Hooker. You know what I'm saying? He he cut more weight, but what a fight, man. Hooker just gonna he can't get overexcited, but what happened, man? He just won around three one, baby. We got a long time to go. Take your time and continue to box. Continue to box. Okay, Hooker. Hooker is taking Ortiz Jr.'s best shots, man. And what I love is that he's taking it and he's returning and he's and he's not backing up, man. That's interesting, man. Does it have to do with the nutrition, the weight cut, the defense? What is it? Because Romero's was able to hit him with something and he rocked Hooker. Ortiz has not been able to do that, man. Oh, good work, Hooker. Be careful taking those body shots, though. Don't get too aggressive, man. Don't get, oh, that was a big shot. That was straight to the sternum. Hooker got to get up out of there. Get up out of there. Those body shots. Get up out of there. Use a jab. Look, he's digging to the body right now on Hooker. Look, Hooker's feeling it, man. He's dropping them. He's dropping them bows, man. Beautiful work from Hooker. Good job. Right when you think, right? Ah, he's getting hit with some big body shots, man. It affected him, but he's moving. It ain't stop him. Survive. Get out of there. Get out of there. Oh, beautiful uppercut from, from Hooker. Get out of there. He's all right. He's all right. Big body shots. Got to get out of there, man. Got to get out of there. He's all right, though. He's all right. I've seen Hooker hurt before. He's not hurt right now. Good work. Good work. Good work. Good work. Come on. There you go. Return. Return. Come on. You got to return now. Come on. Come on. Good 
Good big shots. Get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. Jab, get out of there. That was a good round for Ortiz. He got it, he got he got it back. See, so it's three one. Now it's four one. He said he was trying to breathe, coach. My bad. I know what it's like. <laughs> What a fight. My bad, y'all. I went quiet for a minute. I just I was listening to what he was saying, man, because he was able to tell he was hurt from the body uh, body shots. So they they said he said uh he couldn't breathe, coach. My bad. I could I thought he said I was trying to breathe, coach, something like that. So I guess it's kind of the same thing, huh? Man, them body shots are gonna be the death of Hooker, man. Oh, beautiful counter right hands. So he's gonna have to figure it out, man. Like he, he caught, caught on to the one one two from uh, Ortiz and he started throwing that left hook. Ortiz adjusted quickly. He's going with the body shot. So I, I think if he can adjust to the fact that he's throwing that short right hook or he's gonna throw that short right hand, that's what's gonna uh, prevent Ortiz to kind of stop doing those body shots. It's gonna have to be his counters. There it is, yep. Beautiful work. Look, he just he just announced just said the short right hand. Oh, big body shots. Oh, nice shot over the top, though, from Hooker to uh, counter it. Jab coming right back in, man. Big work. Mm. Big right hand of the body. Right hand of the body right back from Hooker. Come on. Come on, Hooker. You got to get the respect back. Come on, man. You got to counter those jab, uh, jabs in the body. Hooker got to counter those. You got to throw that right hook. There we go. If you're going to do that, go to the body. You got to move your head, man. Those jabs hurt him. Those jabs hurt Hooker. We're right there, sir. Plex. Oh, he's hurt. He's going to take a knee. Mm. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Beautiful round from Ortiz Jr., man. He did what he was supposed to do. That was beautiful work. Jr. 
he would have followed it up. He threw that one two and he threw the one we have to make sure through the one two one two man. I know we dropped you when you hurt and he hurt you, Hooker. I know you in pain, but look at him, man. Look at the blood coming off of his lips, man. Look at the bruises under his eyes, man. You've been putting damage on you, putting work on him, man. You gotta believe in your power, man. Believe in your work. Don't let him outwork you, man. Wait, what happened? Ah, damn. Come on, man. Don't cap. They threw it at a weird time, and I, it lowballed both their rights hit. Cap, bro. That's Cap. Chill out, man. But it looked like it happened when he threw and they threw at the same time. Hell no. They cap it, man. This Jose Ramirez, dick, and Maurice is a solid mother. He's a beast. You see, he's. I'm, I was rooting for him, but don't cap, man. Jose Ramirez, if you like, come on, man. Like, I ain't no brother was twenty two. He's too young right now, man. He banged and went to war. He almost got hurt by Hooker. Think what Crawford would do to him. Earl Spencer would do to him. That's no, no. You you talking you talking crazy? Oh, I missed it. I damn, they just showed it. I wasn't paying attention, man. Wait, what happened? Look, is when he threw it. When he threw it. Boom! It was when he threw it. It was when he threw it. I knew it. They was talking all that jive. They was talking that bullshit trying to say, oh, he threw an amazing shot. No, he literally looked. He went to throw it. Look, he went to throw the right hand, and he just he got it, he he dislocated his his elbow because he threw a, a short right hand and it landed on his on his on his trap. So don't try and cap and make it seem like he made it happen. He threw a short right hand and it landed on Virgil Ortiz Jr.'s uh a trap and it just dislocated. And he was done. It was a freak accident, similar to the like the um shit. Uh, what was the it was uh. Who did Ubank fight? Korbov. Korbov versus Ubank. And Korbov, he dislocated, I think it was his shoulder. It was, it was the same thing, man. Appreciate the light. Yeah, y'all, man, I appreciate the light. But it was, it was the same exact thing. Now, I say this. Ortiz, that's not me taking anything away from Ortiz Jr. Because Ortiz Jr. was going, he was, he was winning the fight easily. And he was on his way to win the fight. Now, if he would have ended up knocking out Hooker, I don't know. I would have loved to see this go into the late rounds. Because I honestly don't think anything that Ortiz landed was significant enough for hooker to stop other than you know that one body shot uh in the in the fifth round that he landed to the sternum but it was he it was it, he dislocated his he dislocated his arm on that short right coming off but you know ortiz jr being 22 ortiz jr being in the 147 division already having a belt 
You know, they're talking about maybe uh, Terrence Crawford next. I don't think that's going to happen, not even close, because he's not ready for it. He had a little bit. That was around seven, you know, TKO, man. My opinion could be whatever it may be, but definitely not ready for the top dogs yet. Definitely not ready. You want to groom him. You want to give him, you know, some other guys, you know, on a, on a Maurice Hooker level. You don't want him against Earl yet because he's a smaller 147, too. He's a smaller, smaller 147. I don't think that would be a good idea. Not right now. No. Why would you say that? That's what I'm saying. Look at this. I'm like against a hooker, a dude who came up from 140 to 147. He's only had one fight other than this fight in 147. And he took he almost got hurt from Hooker. Why are y'all trying to act like he's a natural 147er? That doesn't make any sense. Sometimes the announcers is just I get it. You got to push the agenda, but come on, man. Okay, if y'all up in here, man, please throw a like, show some love. I want to say right now, it was an amazing fight. I enjoyed it. Um, I thought Hooker in the first three rounds, I was very, you know, unimpressed with what he did and disappointed. I'm a Hooker fan. That's why I'm sounding biased. I always go for Hooker. Um, I've been following him for a long time, but I was disappointed. Very disappointed in what he did against Jose Ramirez. But Jose Ramirez at the end of the day, I think Jose Ramirez is a hidden gem. I think he's a beast. He's a dude who can do work at 140. And I think he can come up to 147 and do a lot of work. I think dudes, I think Jose Ramirez is legit. Virgil Ortiz Jr., I'm still trying to make my way and trying to figure that out right now. You know what I'm saying? He's a little bit new on my radar. So, you know, paying attention to the fight. Hooker looks like there's no damage done to him. Ortiz looks like he's been through a 12-round battle. I'm not saying what someone comes out because scar tissue, I say it doesn't matter, but it does. And I hate when people say it doesn't. But either way it goes, what, what, what y'all doing? Why y'all leaving? Come back up in here, man. Don't be like that. Come back. Nah, for real though. Uh, we about to watch. Um, I'm gonna go over to the UFC side of the game. Um, and do it. Look, he said, I think I did okay. He knows that was a tough fight, and it wasn't supposed to be as tough as they thought. But let's see what's going on with the UFC side. I like the honesty from Ortiz Jr. for him being so young. I really do. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Ortiz Jr. He was right. He's being honest. By the way, the co-main event for the Holland versus um, Brunson fight just ended, so we're about to be watching that, but I'm just listening to this interview with him. He said the headshots were hurting them none, so he started going to the body. That yeah, yeah, hey, man, a lot of self awareness for a dude at twenty two. He's he has a lot of potential. I look, I like hearing what him here. I'm a fan. I'm gonna start following him more. I didn't follow Virgil Ortiz Jr. Like I've heard of him. I knew he was legit, but I never followed him closely like I did the other young guns at that you know division. He's not ready yet, man. He don't want that fight, man. So that was the wrong thing Ortiz Jr. just said. It's interesting. I wasn't. I, if I was Ortiz Jr., I know he, he, people might say you sound like a punk or whatever. But nowadays, when people are ducking people, I, I wouldn't. I would. I would not have called that because he said whether I'm ready or not, I'm gonna fight him. So he knew after you know. Having a tough fight with Hooker, he knew he's man. Terrence Crawford gonna be a whole nother thing. 
He knew he's not right. He's 22 years old. He don't, I mean, you don't, you don't even got his grown man strength yet. You know, you don't get a grown man strength until you're about 25. But he don't go against a grown man, Crawford. No, bro. My bad, y'all. I went quiet. I had to listen to that. that. Was actually a very entertaining post fight interview. Oh shit! That was a good fight, though, Maurice Hooker. I didn't like the fact that they were asking him those type of questions about his opponent, saying if he's ready and all that type of stuff. That's putting him in a bad situation. And then, you know, you're asking about. You know, if it was his hand or not, and this and that, man, it looked like it was his hand. I'm not gonna be excused, but either way, he was losing the fight. He's gonna lose the fight either way it goes. Oh, what's good with it? It's snipers, man. My bad. I can't see the comments from where I'm sitting at, man. So I gotta pull it up on the phone side of the game, man. Yeah, man. Hey, yo, come back because we about to watch the main event, Kevin Holland versus Brunson. That's all we got left. I'm gonna be right back too. I'm gonna go do my little thing. If y'all up in here, man, and uh, I see it's one person, so either way it goes, hit the like. So yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna be right back. I'm about to watch the Kevin Holland versus the Brunson fight. You feel me? Ortiz versus Hooker is over. Ortiz won seventh round TKO. Please hit the like button. Please show some love. Yeah, you know what it is. Five rounds in middleweight in our main event, which is yours on the other side of this group. If Philly Garcia didn't have the fighting spirit to drive his ambition, he never would have left home for LA for the biggest oh. call to sleep in. If he listened to those who rejected him, he never would have sold that car to pay for his dream. And if he lacked the will to improve his craft, he never would have made a name for himself, while he was on the biggest names in those forms. That's the fighting spirit. That's what makes it lie. Look out for those who have the fighting spirit. How do you top the perfect cup of Dunkin' Cold Brew? With the perfect cup of Sweet Cold Foam. Sip into a smooth Dunkin' Chocolate Stout Cold Brew tossed with Sweet Cold Foam. Enjoy a medium for $3. Order ahead on the app, America Runs on Dunkin'. With giving food with one protein tastes like
switch that and see all the way you can say it. Grab on my pride. Next one on me. With Infinity now, your test drive comes to you. So you can drive one car one day. And another the next. Because when you find the kind of luxury that fits you, you'll know. Experience luxury on your terms when you purchase a lease at New Infinity online. Infinity now. Lease the 2021 Infinity Flex 5379 a month at your Google Infinity retailer. I'm a Verizon engineer. We built our 5G nationwide so millions of people can do what they love in Verizon 5G quality. In parts of many cities, we have ultra wide, the fastest 5G in the world. This is 5G built no right, only for Verizon. When you come to Las Vegas, you want to be a high roller? You can also take a ride on the toughest Ferris wheel in the world. You're watching QMC Point Night Brunson versus Hollins on ESPN. As we continue here from the home of the UFC, UFC Fight Night is presented by Motel. Well, they say styles make fights, and a clash of styles is what we have here in more ways than one. In the octagon, Derek Brunson's resurgence has proven he belongs among the middleweight elite. And outside of it, he doesn't much care for telling you about it. But Kevin Holland, he was known as a trash talker before he was known as a good fighter. Turns out he's really good. At both. I can break anybody. As long as I mentally show up, physically show up, I can break anybody. Out of Riverside, California, he is Kevin and Trailblazer Holland. He's going to talk a lot. I don't know if I'm talking to my friends. I've never seen a fight talk like that. Seeing somebody a sweet love guy before you put them in bed. That is what I do. <laughs> Test for anybody, I'm a big challenge for anybody. I think that if I get in there and I'm doing all the things that I like to do, and I'm out there and enjoy myself, I think I have the biggest challenge for anybody to be on. <laughs> Keep adding to my training and making sure I'm at the top of the game and continue to fight. One of the best pure athletes this UFC middleweight division has ever seen enter Wilmington, North Carolina's Garrett Cross. I didn't come in this sport to do bare minimum. I came in here to do the, the maximum. Oh, oh, this guy is a phenomenal athlete. And when he wins, it's usually because he lands. Hey, man, I'm looking at the stream. I'm like, I, I need to give me a, a, a cut. I'm like, when your shit look rough when you wear a hat, that's when you know you need to get a cut. Like, Damn. I'm going to get that proper, man. There's something else I want to say, but I forgot. But salute to the people, man. We out here. You heard? But the people out there, salute to the people, man. We here, man. Late night stream, baby. We never go this late. I feel like the beginning of this 2021, man. We haven't had streams that late. This has been the latest one, other than the Canelo one, I would have to say. Maybe the McGregor Poirier one. So the McGregor Poirier was super late. Canelo versus Yildirim was super late. And for some reason, Holland versus Brunson is super late. Interesting. Maybe they try to plan it in the sense where they knew it would end up being after uh, the main event of Ortiz versus Hooker, but I don't. I, I don't think a lot of MMA fans were interested in that. So, maybe I'm tripping though. Riverside, he's from Riverside, California. I ain't from Riverside, but I'm near there, about two hours away from the desert, you heard? So I know where that's from, man. Huh? 
it's always interesting, like Cali lingo. Cali lingo is, is, is hilarious to me because, like, there's so many different parts of Cali. Motherfuckers sound different from everywhere. So it's funny, like, I was looking at some of the comments on, 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 on Holland when he was talking to shit. And someone was like, man, he sound like a white boy or some shit like that. There's no way he hard or something. I mean, I'm telling you, man. Cali is so diverse. You'll hear some of the whitest talking motherfuckers, and you would have no idea the type of shit that they hear. It's just so, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you go over to, like, you know what I'm saying? I've, I've had the fortune to be in enough in different states. You 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 end up find out how diverse Cali is if you ever go there. Places like I never been in New York stuff like that, but Miami. But they say it's like that. But you know what I'm saying? My experience is in Cali, going up there and then being in the different states. Now being on Tennessee, it's like everyone has one lingo. Like you know what I'm saying? It might be different some, but it's all like that same type of. So when they hear something different, it's like, oh, you sound like this, but you don't even. It's like it's like you don't even know you haven't been, you know what I'm saying? But it's that shit funny. But I'm a I'm a Kevin Holland fan, man. I, I became a fan of him probably in the past couple of weeks. I've been looking up all this stuff, watching it, you know what I'm saying? Especially hearing he's from Riverside, man. I'm I'm with it. I'm hundred percent in support, man. It's close enough to the turf, you know what I'm saying? You always gotta do the salutes, you know what I'm saying? So salute to that man. He got a tough opponent in Brunson, man, because I tell you this right now, in my opinion, I would say the closest he's fought against someone. Actually, that's right. Okay, so he did fight Thiago Santos before the knee surgery when he was explosive. I think Santos is the most explosive and powerful person Holland has ever fought, and he is. And and and, and Thiago Santos in anybody's book is probably one of the most powerful, you know, strikers you've ever seen. Watch whatever it may be, especially you know pre knee knee injury. Um, so that's definitely number one. Number two, I would have to do. Uh, Jacare, but you know, what I'm saying I hate saying this because I think Jacare is he, he's a beast, he's a legend, so disrespectful. But he was older at the time, been been through wars. Uh, so you know, you can say you can say whatever you want to say about that. But Jacare has power, and I say number two. But with him fighting Brunson, I would actually move Brunson right ahead of Jacare. I know Jacare beat Brunson twice, but like Brunson said, he never had his had had a, had a training camp. He never fought with no one. He he always did his own training camp, which is absolutely impressive. So, you know, he's been under Henry Hoof. He's been on a three right fight win streak. He's been calm. He's been utilizing his amazing wrestling. He's been utilizing his amazing striking. And when he needs to use that power, he's used it. This is going to be a hard fight for Holland. I have to say, it's going to be his hardest fight other than Thiago. A lot of hype behind Holland. Five fight win streak. But at the end of the day, what does everyone say when they talk about a fighter that may be in a very good spot, right? They might be in a very good spot, but if they don't like them, the first thing they say is, look at their resume. Who do they fight? And so with Holland, as much as, you know, I'm rooting for him, I'm going to win, same way I was going for Hooker. Got to look at his resume. Look at who he fought. He did something impressive. But, you know, Thiago was the hardest one he's ever had to fight, and you know, even though, you know, it was impressive because of his debut. If he did not debut and he had that performance, people would say, stay in your lane. But y'all was talking about a guy who ended up moving up to that light heavyweight. So you have to respect the power, the explosiveness of Yago. So it's really hard to tell and gauge that. Actually, a lot of people probably wouldn't, you know, he's top five light heavyweight, top five middleweight. So, um, you know, when he was in both, you know, classes, top 10 middleweight, whatever you want to say, top eight. Um, but Brunson is the second. Let's see. This is a test, goddammit. This is a hell of a test. I'm all in, though, man. You know, we saw that. I see this the same way I seen Hooker versus Ortiz Jr. It was a big test for Hooker to fight Ortiz Jr. Like, the way Holland fights, he's actually tailor-made for Brunson to knock him out. Because Holland isn't super technical. Holland isn't, you know, I'm going to look for the right, right shot. I'm going to use, you know, I'm going to low him to sleep and hit him. You know, I'm going to use this crazy game plan. He just fights kind of on the whim. Brunson came up fighting on the whim, but now he has a cap under him. I'm telling you. But Holland, is it a mind game, him doing all this shit and, the, you know, the little touch button shit and the weigh-ins and the hugs and, Hey, we're friends, so maybe Brunson will respect him more so than he would if, like, Holland didn't do that. Maybe if Holland 
Remember, Holland was talking shit through Instagram, but now when he's around, like you see when he walked around, I'm gonna give you a handshake. Oh, we hugging, you know, a little touch but bullshit, you know what I'm saying? What if behind all that is like it's different? Like you're gonna come out, you're gonna respect me a little bit more. Whether if I was a young guy coming up talking shit, you'd be like, I'm gonna knock this dude's block out. Now that I'm a young guy and I'm respecting you in person, what if you end up being in a position where I'm saying is you are not as aggressive as you should be. Let's see. Uh oh. Look. Y'all know. Wait, hold on. Y'all know when the glasses come on, the fight's about to come on. So y'all better be watching this. We here, baby. We here. Let's go. We're here. I'm telling y'all right now, this is going to be a hard fight for Holland. This is going to be a hard fight for him. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know how it goes. If I show the fight, they're going to take the channel down. So I can't do that. But what I can do is I can talk about it. Y'all can hear the commentary. We can be on all that. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and hit the like button. That would be a beautiful thing. That would be a beautiful thing. Help a brother out up in here. This, this, is, a hard, this, is, this is a hard fight, though. I'm telling you. Here we go. I honestly don't think I don't see this going five rounds, bro. There's no way this is going five rounds, man. I would say the time for talk is over, but that's not exactly the case in this matchup tonight. Kevin Holland. Banana shakes up spotlight tonight against Derek Brunson. Five possible rounds. Tonight's fight clock is brought to you by Toyo Tires, the official tire of the UFC. So one thing that I noticed, Brunson typically has the reach advantage over his opponents. That is in the case. Okay. Okay. Big front kick. I like it. Oh, oh, he got knocked out. It's almost over. It, it, he's good. All right, my bad. I over, I, over, I over went, but he got hit with a big shot. Got hit with a big shot. That's why I said the sloppiness of Holland is going to possibly be able to get him knocked out. By the way, man, hit that like button if y'all up in here, man. Show some love. So Brunson's on top, controlling him. Yeah, I'd like to see him open that though. The, the, the plan 
Kevin Hart right now to get back to his feet or what? Knock him out like he did to Jack Ray. Oh man, big shots from the top. Trying to roll his hips for a submission from the back. Oh, big elbow there from Bronson. I think it was an impossible punch. And a lot of power points. Yeah, a lot of power points. Between these guys, too. Even though they weighed in close to the same, I would imagine that. Look at this. Gotta be careful from that position going for that key lock, though, because you can get arm bar from there as well. Yeah, and, and, and unless somebody's got like really bad flexibility, you're not gonna get it either. Like myself. Like me. Yeah, you can probably put my <laughs> shoulder out with that. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, again, tremendous start for, for Brunson. Yeah, so Brunson, man, he's entirely controlling, man, the first round, man, the first round. It was a big slip from Holland, and I know that's unfortunate for Holland, and that's not what he wanted to happen either. Because I know he has a triangle lock right now on the body of Brunson, but when you're on the bottom and you have that type of lock, it doesn't really do much. I don't want to say three knockout against Jack Rick, but that takes away, you know, from what he did. But that isn't something that you typically see. You know what I mean? It doesn't happen. Of course, things happen. There's always outliers in any situation. But generally, you don't see that. So we can't depend on something like that. He has to hit the panic button now and say, right, I'm going to get, well, maybe not the panic button, but the urgency button. Get back to his feet. He's got five rounds, so that might be what he's thinking. But you're right. You can't just sit here and let a round melt away unless that's what he's thinking. He's like, if I don't want to waste energy, I'm trying to get up from there. My bad, y'all. I know I went. I went. I went away for a minute. Y'all know how it is, man. Y'all gotta. Y'all, you see how it goes, man. It, it, it is what it is. It is what it is, man. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go on in on this fight, baby. We got five rounds. Brunson right now, top control is amazing. Controlling the fight. I wonder what he's saying. But there's no damage really coming from Brunson on the top position. But he's doing enough, you know what I'm saying, where, you know, he's not going to get stood up from his position. Oh, okay. We can hear it now. I right. This dude hollering, man. I couldn't, I couldn't do it, man. I might, man. Get off me, bro. Get off me. And he almost got his ass knocked out. You better pay attention to the fight. All that shit. Everyone's a fan of all this talk. Not being. Each of these guys, prolific finishers. 25 combined first. 
It's a big left hook from Holland. I didn't understand that uh, reaction from Holland. <laughs> that was. <laughs> Keep them hands up. Brent is like, I want to knock this man out. Holland is crazy, bro. Oh, oh, God damn, what a fight! Oh, oh, full mouth from Brunton on Holland. This isn't a good look. <laughs> oh, get out of there. He's looking for an arm triangle. Get out of there. Yeah, you have to get out of there. You can't, you can't do it from side control unless he's that strong. He almost has it, though. He's close. He almost has it. Holland's in a bad position right now, man. He's in a bad position right now. He's looking to finish it in in half guard. That's tough. Oh, he has it. He has it. He definitely has it. I know he has the hand. I know he's answering the phone right now, and they're supposed to make enough day to, but he's in the perfect position to finish this. Holland's going to get finished from Brunson, in my opinion. There's no way he's going to get out of that. This is not a good position for Brunson. I'm excuse me from Holland. Holland's in a terrible position right now, guys. Oh, he looks to switch it. Oh, he got out. He did it. Oh my God. Another takedown from Brunson. My bad, y'all. This is a great fight. I'm in it. I'm in it all the way, man. Certified arch support. 
getting fueled with one protein feels like that. Getting fueled with three energy back proteins feels like eggs, shields, and nuts. Pick three because three is better than one. So he lost the first two rounds. That's a fact. Holland did. He hurt Brunson. He dropped him, so it's weird. So it's like, did he did he lose the last round? I know you gotta think about that, yeah. Did he drop? Oh, there it was again. That right hand. And then get out. He's just, he's there in a position just to get took down. Yeah, great call from Bisman. But you got to remember, he's, I, I believe he's a black belt, so I, I think he feels comfortable being off his back. He thinks maybe he can be able to create something against Brunson, because if you have watched the first two rounds, Brunson has been able to get takedowns, but he hasn't done really any damage off of those. Even when he was in full mount, he wasn't able to do anything, so... Yeah, that's what I just said. Bisman disagreed with me. It's crazy. It's like he heard what I said. Because I'm like, he's just doing the takedowns. Like he's satisfied. He got the takedown. And he's feeling like he's get he got the points off the takedown, but he's not doing any damage off the takedown. He's actually getting more taking more. <laughs> so Brunson was like laying. Like I just said, I don't think Holland minds being off his back because he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Feels like he can throw some stuff up when he can. He feels like he hasn't been taking any damage from Brunson on his back, and he's like, I could probably throw more damage off my back. And he has been low ball. So how do you score this when someone gets a takedown, but they're taking more damage from that? Like that's weird. Two minutes to go. The ground strikes in this third round. Holland actually outnumbering those of Derek Brunson. And at this point, to be honest, there's not much difference in power, even though Holland's off of his back. That's why I just said it's like, come on, man. It's like Holland is actually doing more damage off his back. And Brunson is being on top. So I'm trying to figure out how do you score this round. Like his ground strikes are more significant than the top strikes from Brunson. So do you just give him... Hey, that's weird. Does, does that come into an aspect of MMA now? Because, like, if you think about boxing, right, if someone is the aggressor, like, usually the aggressor gets scored a point. But if you have someone boxing and they're on their back foot and they're landing more potent punches, more clean shots off their back four, it goes to the boxer, a.k.a. Floyd. 
So now, if MMA, if you have guys on the ground able to control the guy on the top enough where they're able to add more, uh, land more clean shots than the guy on the top, how do you score that round? What's more significant, the takedown or the damage being done when you're actually in the takedown position? You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. Please hit the light button. I'm in the corner of Holland. At the end of the shot, I'm having a serious word. I said, Look, listen, it's all well and good. Do you want to be this guy? Yeah. Or do you want to be. You want to be the guy that's known for talking and being funny and all the rest of it. You want to be a winner, a fight for the guy. Because if you want to be the latter, now it's time to turn on. Now it's time to get serious. Now Brezin is actually doing some damage. <laughs> but it's like, don't touch me, bro. <laughs> Both of the fighters are entering the fourth round for their first time in their career. So Brunson, even though he's winning the fight, he's not as cool, calm, and collected I would have expected him to be going back to his corner. Holland's a little bit more cool, calm, and collected. I wonder if all this talking and all this bullshit from Holland is going to be able to bring him out. Because I'm like, you got to think about the scoring is going to be weird. The first round easily goes to Brunson. The second round, it could go to Brunson, but at the same time, Holland dropped Brunson. So, yeah, Brunson got two takedowns, but there was no damage. Holland dropped Brunson, so uh, you, you can say it goes to Holland, but I want to give it a 10-8 rounds because it took takedowns. I was just giving it a round. Brunson, uh, Holland got took down by Brunson his last round, but he was doing actually more damage from the bottom for majority of the round until maybe the last 20, 30 seconds. So I guess you give it to Brunson. So we're in the fourth round now, so I would say it was 2-1 Brunson, I guess. It's, it's, this, is, this, is, this is a very hard fight to score. Because you can argue Holland did more damage off the ground than Brunson did on top. But we're in the fourth round. Another one-two from Holland. Holland has that one-two down pack. That's landing every time. Every time he like, throws that right hand, there it is. It's over. It's over. Oh, yeah. Brunson's getting, he's, I, like I just said, as soon as I said it, you see it happening. Brunson is literally, he's hes getting hit with every right hand from, 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 from Holland. Brunson cannot get out of the way. Good slip, though, that time from uh, Brunson. Don't let him take you down again, Holland. He went to try and get a... Uh, Kamara, that wasn't a good, that wasn't, that wasn't the way to go. Because he put himself in a vulnerable position. And he was winning on the, on the feet. And he's making the, the round so hard to judge. He's giving, get up, like. I'm like, there's too much time on the clock for you to be too comfortable being on your back right now, Holland. Because at this point now, it doesn't matter how close the rounds in the last three. It doesn't matter how close the last three rounds are. These last two rounds matter everything. If they remember you being on your back, getting taken down by Derek Brunson, pause. Brunson's going to win because that's all they're going to remember. So you have to make some type of statement. And you were in the beginning because you were hurting Brunson, but you once again put yourself in a position where you got taken down. And now you're too comfortable being off your back and you're not even getting your ass up. And I said, I didn't think it was going to be a five round fight. Look what we got. Elbow's there. Elbow's there. Elbow's there. Elbow's there. Elbow's there. Elbow's there. 
Best case scenario. Yeah, I mean, Brooks is doing what he needs to do to win. He's controlling his fight, he's chipping away. Not the most spectacular shots, but he is landing, he is doing damage, and he's taking control of the scorecards. Just that aspect alone. We have in his last four fights, including this one. Multiple takedowns in each fight. Come on, you talking to shit, Allen, man, but you ain't getting up. Get your ass up. Gotta get up. Get up. You got to make a statement at the end of this round if you want a chance and winning a decision if you can't finish him. I know, and he's not even trying to do anything. I know, he's giving him the fight. I know, all he has to do is just, he's just allowing him to keep this position. That's frustrating. Please hit that like button, y'all, if y'all up in here, because watching this, it's very frustrating. If y'all hit the like button, it may make it a little less frustrating. So please hit that like button. Shows a love. So still laughing, but showing some frustration. That really the first time you heard a serious word out of his mouth tonight. Yeah, and now it's time to turn it on. I mean, it's time to turn it on and start round one. Uh, this might be not getting on, he's a fun character, but he's got all the momentum that he's gained in 2020. No, he was supposed to fight for the title. I mean, the fight now, Kevin Brunson, he's going up in this fight. Brunson did not want to touch his hand, like, nah, bro. While he was doing that, I just knocked him out. Fuck it. Fifth round, Holland is definitely losing this fight. I think the only way he wins, he got to get a knockout. I don't think it doesn't matter if he wins this round. If he dominates the round, I think he's losing to the point where he needs a knockout. I know he got to throw that right hand. You're going to pop out that many jabs. Don't follow it with something. Like he leaps right into a clinch, right into a takedown. Can I please see? All he has to do is pummel in. I don't understand why he doesn't even know the basic fundamentals of a pummel. Like he can easily get out of this if he just. Just pummel in, man. Why are you allowing yourself to just stay in that position? It's like he doesn't know what to do. And Holland went for the takedown and got it.
Yeah, man, it's too little, too late, baby. Oh, shit. You got to do work, man. Brunson got up. And got it. And Holland gave it right to him. That's unfortunate, man. Holland had, a, had an opportunity many times in this fight to finish Brunson. He had an opportunity to propel himself in the middleweight division. And he showed himself, you know, that either this be either this shows him to be a this shows to be a minor setback, or this is gonna show Holland's level of fighting and his level is mid-tier. You know, the mistakes he made can easily be fixed, but you know, anyone who was sold on him being the next big thing, big champion, y'all, y'all gonna put that in the back pocket for a little bit because this was his opportunity. Five rounds and took an L, laughing. I appreciate the showmanship. I appreciate everything. It was fun to watch. It's fun to have hopes. Fun to have to hope someone like him would end up getting propelled and see him against a big thing. But let's be honest. Holland has a lot of work to do. I'm going to get about it here, man. It's already late, man. It's 11.45 where I've been, man. I've already been streaming longer than I already thought, man. I appreciate everybody who's been coming through today. Please hit the like button before I get up out here. Please, if you're not subscribed to the family, subscribe to the family. I appreciate y'all. It was fun. By the way, the Snyder Cut is out. I appreciate the Snyder Cut being out. I have not watched it in its totality yet. I will watch it in its totality when the time is right. I will do my review. I don't give a fuck. Salute to the people. I'm up out of here. I'm about to eat some good food, too. By the way, that's what I was going to talk about, too. I'm on day. Let me see. I'm on day six of my diet. I'm eating much cleaner, so I'm about to go eat right now. I got some good shit up in there, man. I got some, some spinach, ground turkey, you know, clean chicken. Good stuff. I'm going to eat some good food. 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 i am going to Appreciate y'all. Hit that like button. I'm about here, man. Salute. By the way, Brunson won. I know they ain't announced yet, but I don't even got to y'all. Brunson won these. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. The judges score the contest.